hello guys welcome to my channel my name is james and today we're talking about something a little different than business we are talking about financing and today the main focus is islamic financing what is islamic financing what are the differences that it has with the conventional type of financing and these are the things that we are going to look at today so let's get those credits rolling let's get straight to it islamic financing is quite a new concept in the kenyan market and there's a lot of confusion on what exactly it is and what difference does it have with the normal kind of banking which i will from now on call conventional banking but in order for you to be able to understand islamic banking then you need to understand what conventional banking is in kenya for you to be able to begin a bank or for you to be able to operate a bank the central bank has actually put a core capital level of 1 billion now i don't need to explain how to form a bank if you're interested in that maybe we can do another video i want to go into what the characteristics are of conventional financing so that when we move into islamic banking you can actually start to see the differences so this is the basic of how a bank operates a bank opens an account for a customer who at this point will put their money their deposits into that account to the bank that is a liability it is a liability because whatever amount a customer comes and walks into the branch and brings to the bank is money that is quote unquote lent to the bank now the bank picks that money and then looks for customer number two who now wants to expand their business who wants to build their home who wants to bid for that tender or do that tender and actually now lends them that money in form of a loan now any amount of money that you will be given by a bank as a loanee or as a debtor is now an asset to the bank now the money that the bank gives to you it expects that if it gave you a hundred thousand shillings then now at the end of the day they will tell you we gave you a hundred thousand shillings now we want two hundred thousand shillings just for this example now the money that you bring back is not the same as the one that you had brought at the first place so you were given a hundred thousand shillings and you bring back two hundred thousand then that a hundred thousand is what the bank is making and from that money it now gives back to the person that had given it money in the first place in terms of deposit and then it, it, it is able to pay for its rent, it's able to pay for its utilities, it's able to pay to its employees their salaries and also declare profits and dividends to the shareholders at the end of the year. Now when you go to a bank and you ask for a particular amount of money, you are given by the bank that amount of money and that at the end of the day you will bring back more money than you were given so in this case money is something that can be traded it's a commodity and that's the core of banking of course there are more things about banking but if you understand how banks make money then you can now be able to understand islamic banking so in islamic banking it's a little different one of the main tenets of islamic banking is the lack of interest and I know the first question that will come to your mind is how then is a bank, an Islamic bank going to make money if there is no interest? I will answer that very shortly. Now, in the Islamic faith, there is a word known as riba. Riba is interest. Now, as we had spoken about in conventional banking, we had said that when you're given money, then you have to bring more money. That excess amount on top of the money that you had been lent is to the bank interest income. 
in islamic banking interest is not allowed meaning it is a haram which means the same thing haram means not allowed so how does islamic banking work when you have brought in your money as a customer to an islamic bank or to a bank that has islamic banking they will take your deposits and normally whatever you have put into your account is what you will get at the end of the month even at the end of the year you will not get anything out of it so if you bring one shilling you will get one if you put in 10 million it's the same amount that you'll find at the end of the that is the core that is the basic if you bring money into the bank then you will get the same money out there will be no interest no riba there will be no amount that will be put on top of the money that you brought into the account meaning that that account on the first level is already Sharia compliant meaning that it conforms to the tenets of Sharia now on the next level where now someone comes to the bank and wants financing this is what the bank will do there has to be a transaction of trade that is in the middle for it to become compliant there is nowhere where you will bring money and then be told to bring more money so we'll use an example of someone who is a sugar trader a sugar trader will walk into the bank and say that they want more stock in their business so in conventional banking what would normally happen you just quote this is the amount of money that i require and the bank will give you and then you'll sign an agreement and then you get your money and you go buy your sugar but now when you come to an islamic bank it's a little different what the bank will do is that they will require that you let them know where it is you normally buy your sugar from because the bank has to have an asset that it will now sell to you so the bank will now find out that person a wants to buy sugar person b sells sugar so person a who's our debtor who wants a loan from the bank will now want to buy sugar from person b who's the supplier so the bank will come in the middle and then say that it will buy the sugar from person b at the amount 900,000 a million in our case and then it will pick that sugar and become a shopkeeper itself so the bank will now own the sugar once it owns the sugar at a million shillings that is the cost to it to the bank it will now look at person a and tell person a this is my shop in my shop i have sugar that cost me a million but i will now sell it to you at 1.2 million are we together so now what the bank is selling to person a is not money anymore it's a commodity and money in islamic finance cannot be a commodity money is an exchange of value money cannot increase in value by you gave me 1 million i give you 1.2 that is wrong so in this case sugar becomes the commodity that is now sold to person a but as a trader if i have my own shop i cannot buy things at 1 million i cannot go to sell to my customers at 1 million that means that i will go out of business so as a shopkeeper bank what do i need to do i need to calculate how much do i need to make in terms of profit in order to pay for all my expenses so the bank will tell the customer this is what it cost me and this is what it is going to cost you so my profit is made from selling actual commodities so at the end of the day the bank will make money from sale of commodities so if a customer is a petroleum customer the bank will actually go buy from the petroleum dealer and then now sell to the person who wants to buy petrol that is one of the biggest differences with islamic banking and conventional financing islamic banking has six main principles the first principle is called sanctity of contract what that basically means is that the buyer who is the loan person and the seller who's usually the bank have to look at this contract that we are about to get into 
according to the Quran or to the Sharia law, does it conform? One of the main things that is looked at here is, is the use of the money or is this trade going to be against what the Quran or the Sharia contracts, Sharia law actually says? Anything that can happen that is against the Sharia law and is involved in this contract can actually make this contract to be invalid. The second principle in Islamic banking is risk sharing. Risk sharing means that before any Islamic banking transaction, the bank and the depositor have to determine what level of risk each is taking. Is it going to be 100% on one side or is it going to be shared in a particular percentage? So before the transaction happens, there has to be a surety. There will be no uncertainty on the level of risk that is involved. Number three, which we have talked about, is there is no riba. There is no interest. The bank cannot give you an amount of money in cash and then expect to get more from you. I have explained just before this how the bank actually makes its money and we have to make sure that there is a trade that happens so that the transaction is actually valid. The next is economic purpose or activity. It says every Islamic banking transaction has certain economic purpose of or activity. Further, Islamic banking transactions are backed by a tangible asset or real service. There is no unsecured lending in Islamic banking. There has to be an asset that is underlined on every single transaction. The next principle is fairness. Every single transaction must be seen as fair. It can never be favoring one side, either the bank or on the other side, it can never just favor the depositor. All transactions must be brought into as an agreement between the bank and the depositor and it has to be seen as fair. The last principle is invalid subject matter. Now the law of the land can allow for you to be able to finance particular forms of business, but the terms and conditions must always be black and white. There can never be vagueness in, a, in, in an Islamic banking transaction, especially when it comes to finance. And there are transactions that are actually allowed by the law of the country, but if they're not allowed by the Sharia law, then those transactions cannot be financed. So here are the differences between conventional banking and Islamic bank. In conventional banking, Money is a commodity that can be exchanged that will increase in value and it is also an exchange of value. But on the other side, money can never be a commodity, meaning that you can never sell money. When you give an amount of money, you will receive the same amount. In conventional banking, time value determines how much you can be able to charge for a particular transaction. but in Islamic banking, the profit is based on the service. It does not matter what service it is, you determine the level of profit at the time of the transaction. In conventional banking, interest is charged on an organization no matter what happens. If the organization goes into losses, the bank will still require that interest is paid. In Islamic banking, the bank operates in terms of profits and loss. When an organization goes into losses, the bank is supposed to have a share of those losses. This will be dependent as well on the type of contract that the bank has entered into with the person that it is financed. Another difference is that conventional banks use money as a commodity which can lead to inflation. On the other end, Islamic banking always links its financing to a real asset with economic value. In this case, mostly it would be things like title deeds, logbooks, mortgages where land is involved and houses are involved, shares and stocks, things that actually have value to them. Islamic banking is quite an exciting form of financing in this country. 
and the way things operate in this country there are in this country there are two main banks that are fully islamic banks which is first community bank and gulf african bank habib bank was bought by diamond trust bank dubai islamic bank is about to start operations hopefully they will be given a license soon so those are the fully islamic banks in this country other conventional banks have also begun what are known as islamic banking windows which means that they operate their conventional business on one side and then they have an opportunity for the islamic banking customers to actually be served in a separate system within the same bank banks in kenya that have islamic banking windows include chase bank national bank kcb bank Na uh, which other bank am i forgetting diamond trust bank i've already mentioned and i will put other links in the description of any other banks that i may have left out one of the most common challenges that people face is the question that what is the difference between interest and profit and why are banks charging 14 percent at the time of this video interest and then when they come to islamic banking customers they charge the same 14 percent as profit is there a difference and the answer is in the operations then it is different if a bank actually just gives you money and then tells you to go and spend and then at the end of the day bring back that money then that is interest but in islamic banking as a customer you're not supposed to be given the money the money is sent directly to the seller who now gives ownership of the asset that is being bought to the bank and the bank now sells that to you as a loan customer i hope this video explains to you a little about islamic banking i know that there is a lot more that i have not yet touched on but if you have any questions or any insights that you'd like to share please share them in the comments below and we'll interact a bit more let's talk about more next week thank you for watching